Hello everybody, my name is Cara on Fire and welcome to my beginner tips for small lands. These are the things I've learnt across my journey of playing the game and hope to pass on to you to help you out. Great trees are a wonderful place to have a base in the very beginning. This one I'm at right now is the one closest to the spawn. And if you've ever found an area that looks a lot like this, you'll be like, huh, what is this? If you talk to the gnome here, he will tell you that you have to climb the top of the tree to claim this encampment, which you can do just as a beginner person, bog standard. So for this one, I found this area, but we need to find a place to climb up, which for this one in particular is around the other side of the tree. So we will go over there and go to that side to climb up the tree. If you're ever wondering where the place to climb up is, just go around the tree a bit and you should find a place that is suitable. Usually you'll be suitable by climbing mushrooms or for this one you'll see a route going around the tree that you can climb. Now you would think these jumps look way too high for your little character to go up, but they are not. You can climb up the big trees just fine with your character, even if those jumps look incredibly unrealistic. And if you don't get it the first time, just keep trying. You'll get up that tree. I promise you it will be 100% worth climbing up the tree to see what there is at the top. It is definitely 100% worth it. Better healing wraps. Your first way to heal is just eating. Your second way to heal is simple bandages, which will be handy, but do you know a better way to heal? Honey crumbs. We can get honey crumbs quite easily. Honey crumb is an absolutely amazing thing because it's going to help you make better healing wraps. There we go, just picking it up gives us the recipe. If you are to come further north up the map, it's quite easy to get through to here. You can go from the tree we claimed. If you go further up, you should find a picnic bench. Under this picnic bench and around the area just north of it is absolutely loaded with honey crumb. Now, you do need to be careful with the bees. If you see any bees, do avoid them. They will get aggressive with you. Not when you pick up the honey crumb. They're just aggressive in general if you get too close. And they can be a bit, uh, well, not very nice to get away from if you do have that delightful experience. So you go around this area, pick up loads of honey crumb, keep going north, north, get some more honey crumb. If you're getting chased, just keep running. I always find that helps. But anyway, pick up tons and tons of honey crumb because this is going to help you with better healing. And I can tell you, it's absolutely worth doing this early to get better healing wraps because they do miles better than the ones that we get in the beginning. See the healing of the low wrap and he does so much per. It's actually quite slow healing, especially if you're in a predicament, it doesn't do very well. But the healing wraps that are better are going to blow your mind and change your world. So, so to compare the healing wraps, I had some damage taken to me. I'm going to use the better one. And let's see how fast that goes up in comparison. Look how fast that's going up. That's way better. And if I look at my inventory, you can see. There we go. So much better. You get a lot longer bandaging time. And this is actually going to heal me much more fuller than the other healing wrap. They only need the workbench craft. You could even just put a workbench out wherever you like to make them. You go down to the bottom, healing patch. All it needs, one honey crumb, one fiber, cheap as chips, make loads of them. They're gonna be so help for you, helpful for you in the beginning. I absolutely recommend you make some of these and don't bother using the simple bandages if you can help it because these are way better. One recommendation I can have for you in this game is go to bed. Yep, a gamer's worst nightmare. <laughs> Bedtime. Woo. No, I'm joking. At nighttime, though, it does get scary. Creatures will get larger and more dangerous, such as the grasshopper will turn into a blue version that is big and angry and ideally... You don't really want to be around when that kind of thing pops out. See, we have one right here. The grasshopper. Nocturnal grasshopper. Quite mean, does a lot of damage, not very nice. You get the same with dawn ants and other things like that. So what you want to do, if you can, is just go to bed, honestly, because then you will avoid these and uh, be able to get away from them. So if you could do that, 
go to bed and you avoid the night creatures or you have a lot of running on your hands because creatures somewhat seem more vicious at night time either way they're just angry it's a bit like minecraft treat it like minecraft make sure to collect all these starter area items this will definitely help you out before you visit captain hearn because otherwise you won't have enough fiber to make a full set of beginner's armor if you take the time to farm out the starter areas very thoroughly you get a lot of resources that will boost you a lot in the beginning if you're having a bit of trouble with this and finding things remember you can always use the search key which is traditionally used on v however a owl in the tutorial area will show you what key that is for you if it is not v but this should be able to help you look for different things in your environment because it will highlight twigs and different items that you can go ahead and pick up if you farm diligently enough around the starter area by the time you get to captain hearn you should have enough resources to be able to get some nice armor if you do not you can always go down the path a little bit more and farm some fiber on the left and right and then come back and talk to him if you talk to him he will tell you about crafting armor and he can craft armor for you so you can see we can afford all of the padded braces and wraps now because we have farmed enough fiber for them this little boost in farming in the starting area as well will let you build stuff in your crafting tab very quickly so make sure you do it it will give you one hell of a boost because once you come out of this area that is richer with the resources it's going to be a lot more painful down below to get these resources because you could be challenged by ants and nasty critters like that make sure to farm edible mushrooms this is because they're one of the best foods you can get early on that is extremely easy to obtain you need free edible mushroom before you can make a mushroom steak but it will be far fulfilling and much much better than making the grasshopper legs to eat they have the same values but getting as many grasshoppers as you can of uh, edible mushrooms is not as easy so you can make these at your campfire they give you 30 nourishment and 180 seconds of blocking nourishment loss and it will be extra good for you the grasshopper legs do the same but again they're not as easy to obtain and you need two of them so make some mushroom steaks they're going to give you a really good boost out in the beginning and they will help do a little bit extra healing for you as well if you have lost some health take note of the symbols on enemies health bars so as you can see on this cup it has a sword icon now my bat i have in the beginning has a sword icon so that means it's strong against ants you can also if you didn't know hold down your attack button for a bit more of a powerful attack but it does drain more stamina but it should do some more damage you can see normal whacking only does five and the charge up attack does double the damage so if you want to use that instead for some attacks it might help you with singular targets different bugs have different symbols on them so for the sawyer bug you have the pike symbol which means if you were to pike the sawyer bug it would be way better than using a normal sword and this applies for a lot of different creatures they all have different weaknesses that you can use different weapons for to get a better damaging effect on them just keep an eye out for the symbols on their health bar you usually get a sword a pike and a blunt object and that will show you which one you'll need to use to get the best damage on the target if a storm approaches you can either keep yourself safe by making a cube which will keep you safe because you're under shelter or what i do when i'm out and about and don't have many resources is what i do is i i literally make a bed i make sure i'm tethered to it and then the storm will kill me but at least i will respawn right where i was so i can go ahead and pick up my bag again that's what i can recommend to you it saved me a lot of time doing that so 100 percent recommend doing that uh, because it's not always viable making yourself a little cube to stay in if you're wondering what the sheltered buff is it should say in your status menu or just above your health bar what it is so you should be able to stay nice and safe from the storm inside your cube and the reason the storm will mainly kill you is because it makes you very cold make sure to follow markers now we're going to have a look on our map at the moment you can't see any markers at all 
But if you explore around, you'll be able to soon see people on the map. I'll give you an example of a mostly completed map on my save. If you want to find certain people, I have a few here that you can keep track of. The first one you'll want to visit is Caleb. So once you've done everything here, go to Caleb and he will teach you stone armor and that will give you your first upgrade to stone armor. Once you're done with Caleb and progressing to the next tier, you can then see about seeing Skaddy or Skady or however you say it. And that will progress you to your next tier and all that. And once you're pretty much done with Skady, you'll probably end up going to Drustana. And that's pretty much how it goes. So if that helps for a map reference, I definitely recommend having a look on those locations for the next progressions. Because these characters will give you unlocks for different armor and that is their purpose. Make sure to harvest rye. Rye looks like, well, rye. It looks like wheat really. Yeah, there you go. When you come up to it and say rye, you need a hatchet to actually get these down. But these are really good because one, they give you a lot of fiber and two, they give you seeds and seeds are going to be used to make a refined version of wood for your next tier up of items. So you want to make sure you get plenty of seeds before you reach that level. And I think it's a good idea to farm these because not only are you getting lots of fiber, you're getting seeds for your next tier. So if you can get a bunch of rye, make sure you absolutely do so. Do you wish to upgrade to your first set of tools? You absolutely can. You're going to need a mandibular pickaxe and all you're going to need is bull ant mandibles and the rest. And you pretty much kill massive red ants for those with a sword. The other one you need is the crude hatchet, which needs chitin and resin and wood. And chitin, unfortunately, is gotten via soya beetles. The best way to take those beetles out normally is using a pike. But if you don't have that, make sure you gather around until you can get one. You'll need stone, so you'll need to make the pickaxe first. Or you can use arrows, but it takes a lot longer. Now we got our healing wraps, this is going to help us with the soya bugs. They can be quite annoying. Get a bow because it does pierce damage, which is something they are weak to. So for now, we got a bow. Make sure you put your arrows on your arrow slot. That is a very easy mistake to make. And let's go and find a soya bug. I'm going to a place that's probably my favorite place to kill them to start out with because you can get quite the vantage point if you do so. So I'm going to sit at the top of this rock. I'm going to look for them. There we go. They're everywhere. Look at them. Gross. So what we're going to do, if we shoot them from above, we have enough time to shoot them again by the time they get up here. And then we can fight them one-on-one -on -one with the sword. Of course, the sword doesn't do as much damage. So if you can get something with pierce damage before that, uh, it will be a lot better for you. But if you can't, then you can't that's just how it goes so let's see if we can shoot one from there or oh, that one might be more palatable oh no wait for it to get a bit closer that one there we go we can definitely get that one aim just above it there we go see that did a ton of damage and as you can see soya beetle has a pierce mark on it so it definitely means the arrows do a lot more damage as you can see it coming up we shoot it again jump away I find the best way to avoid these is by jumping. Oh, he fell off the rock. Oh, only momentarily, though. So, we're going to sword him. Here we go. Give him a bit of sword damage. You can see it's not doing very much for me, the sword, but the arrow was doing quite a lot. So, there we go. That's because he is actually strong against sword damage, which you can probably see on his bar with the grey shield. So there we go, we killed the soya beetle and the soya beetle gave us chitin which is going to help us make our axe which is going to help us move along. So let me just try that again, do it a little bit better than last time to help you guys out. We'll shoot the soya beetle just a little bit above its head. Oh, we missed it. That's very clever, isn't it? <laughs> no, why are you moving? All right, let's wait for them to stabilize. We'll shoot that far away. That should hit. There we go. We got one. 38 damage. So you can see that did a lot of damage. It's actually not paying any attention to me right now. I'm hoping I didn't hit both of them. That would have been embarrassing, wouldn't it? There we go. You can see, if you get used to it, one, you have a lot of soya bugs around here. Two, you can get... You can kill them quite a bit. 
Now, you can also block in this game if you want, but I always find I never get much use out of blocking. That's because it removes so much stamina when you block. So, it never seems to be that useful for me to do, so I prefer hack and slash, if I'm honest with you. But there we go. If you can get savvy with it, you can pretty much kill them before they get up to you, or mostly kill them before they get up to you. And this is one of the best points to do that at, because one, you get a lot of beetles, two, they have a long run up, and you have a high vantage point. I'm right here on the map, so I always, I always think like this top section is absolutely great for starting out, I'm not going to lie. It's amazing. So if you want to get some soya beetles easy, go here. You can see there's like a little white ruin thing you could use for reference once you get here on the map. The axe in question that we were aiming for was this one. You're going to need four chitin for it to make the crude axe. But once you get a crude axe, you'll be able to harvest things like flowers and stuff like that. So that's going to absolutely help you out. The stone cutter is something you're going to need in the game later on. It requires bottle caps and screws. Where do you find them? Well, if we take a trip down to pretty much any beach or riverside, you'll most likely find nails and bottle caps. And, uh, well, probably ants as well, let's be honest. This is one of your best places to get early on screws and bottle caps any kind of riverside or anything like that you can get tons of them and it'll help you get your first grinder so this area is literally just down from spawn so you can come here and get a bunch of them and around the area around this as well you can get them bottle caps and nails and you'll be off on your way another place you can go is ant nests so if you were to go across the water as such and go over in this area you should find another npc that helps you but you also find a stone mine and in little ant warrens like that and tunnels you should be able to find like battery kind of things with nails sticking out of them so if you have a shortage of nails you should be able to go to those places as well and get yourself some uh, well nails and stuff but bottle caps mainly go on the beach for them that's where you'll find them anyway thank you for watching i hope this helped if it did consider giving me a sub because it will help me out a lot and it will keep you in touch with any more small lands videos i have to offer you but anyway thank you for watching i love you and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye